Welcome to the Hustle Report by Jason Malone, presented by Clicks Media. What's up, guys? So today we're going to be talking about title and how Jay Z made a bag twice off of his involvement with the company. Title is a music streaming service that was created by Norwegian company Aspiro in 2014. Aspiro was founded in 1998 and initially provided technology services for the music industry, such as music streaming and digital distribution. In 2012, Aspiro launched a high fidelity music streaming service called WIMP, which was only available in Scandinavia. The service was praised for its high quality sound and editorial content, but Aspiro saw an opportunity to expand globally and compete with other streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music. To do this, Aspiro created a new brand called Tidal and rebranded WIMP as Tidal in 2014. The service was relaunched with a focus on high quality audio streaming and exclusive content from popular artists. Tidal was also marketed as being artist owned with a number of high profile musicians, including Jay-Z, Beyonce, Madonna, and Kanye West investing into the company. One of Tidal's key features is its high fidelity audio, which allows users to listen to music in lossless quality, providing a more immersive listening experience. Tidal also offers a range of exclusive content, including live performances, music videos, and interviews with artists. In 2015, Tidal faced controversy when it was accused of inflating its subscriber numbers. However, the company has since continued to grow and expand its services, offering a range of subscription plans and expanding its reach to more countries around the world. In 2021, Tidal was acquired by Square, a financial technology company founded by Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey. So how did Jay-Z get involved and ultimately become the face of the brand? Jay-Z became involved with Tidal through his relationship with the company's previous owner, Aspiro. Aspiro was initially acquired by Project Panther Bidco, a company that was owned by Jay-Z, for $56 million in 2015. So essentially, Jay-Z acquired Aspiro through one of his private equity arms, where he was investing in other assets that he saw potential value and growth within the music industry. Jay-Z saw potential in Tidal as a music streaming service that could provide a higher quality listening experience for fans and better compensation for artists. He believed that Tidal could be a way to disrupt the music industry and empower artists to have more control over their music and how it's distributed. After the acquisition, Jay-Z became the face of the brand, using his celebrity status and influence in the music industry to promote Tidal and attract other high profile artists to the platform. He also played an active role in the company's management and strategy, serving as CEO of Tidal for a period of time. Under Jay-Z's leadership, Tidal made a number of exclusive deals with artists to release their music exclusively on the platform and also provided access to high quality audio streaming and other exclusive content. Despite some initial controversy and criticism, Jay-Z's involvement and promotion of Tidal helped to raise the profile of the service and establish it as a serious contender in the competitive music streaming market. So how was it ultimately acquired by Square? And how was that deal structured? Well, in early 2021, Tidal was acquired by Square, which is a financial technology company founded by the Twitter CEO, Jack Dorsey. The acquisition came about after Tidal's previous owner, Jay-Z, had been looking for a buyer for the service for some time. According to reports, Jay-Z had been in discussions with several potential buyers, including Apple and Twitter, but ultimately decided to sell Tidal to Square because he believed that the company shared his vision for empowering artists and improving the music industry. The deal was structured as an all cash transaction with Square paying $297 million to acquire a majority stake in Tidal. As part of the deal, Jay-Z and other artist owners of Tidal, including Beyonce and Madonna, were given minority stakes in Square. The acquisition was seen as a strategic move for Square, 
which had been looking to expand its presence in the music industry. Square's Cash App, a peer-to-peer -peer payment service, had already been used by musicians and fans to facilitate payments for merchandise and concert tickets, and the acquisition of Tidal was seen as a way to further integrate Square into the music ecosystem. For Tidal, the acquisition by Square provided access to new resources and expertise, which could help the company to continue to grow and innovate in the highly competitive music streaming market. Square's experience in financial technology and digital payments could also help to improve Tidal's payment systems and royalty structures, which have been a point of controversy and criticism in the past. Overall, the acquisition of Tidal by Square was seen as a strategic move for both companies, as it allowed for them to combine their respective strengths and pursue a shared vision for empowering artists and improving the music industry. So basically, Jay-Z, over the course of three transactions, made a super bag from Tidal. Jay-Z sold his ownership stake in Tidal twice during the growth of the company, and he benefited financially from both transactions. Initially, Jay-Z's company Project Panther Bidco, which is essentially a private equity company, acquired Tidal's parent company, Aspiro, for $56 million. As a part of that deal, Jay-Z became the majority owner of Tidal and then used his celebrity status and influence to promote this service and attract other high-profile artists to the platform. In 2017, Jay-Z sold a 33% stake in Tidal to Sprint, a U.S. telecommunications company, for $200 million. This transaction valued Tidal at $600 million which was a significant increase from its initial acquisition price just two years later. So let's recap that. Jay-Z acquired the company for 56 million, but then turned around and sold a third of his stake for 200 million? Insane. Then in 2021, Jay-Z sold the majority of his remaining stake in title to Square for $297 million. This transaction valued Tidal at $435 million, which was lower than its previous valuation, but still represented a significant return on investment for Jay-Z. Overall, it's estimated that Jay-Z made more than $300 million from the two sales of Tidal during the growth of the company. This is a significant amount of wealth creation, and it highlights the potential for successful investments in the music streaming industry particularly as the industry continues to evolve and adapt to new technologies and business models. So once again, through ownership and also a little bit of financial engineering, Jay-Z was able to create significant wealth because he was the owner of this company. This episode was brought to you by Clicks Media, where we're focused on giving you the tools and information that you need so that you can launch and scale your business. At Clicks Media, we build websites, mobile apps, and we create and develop content strategies so that you can raise awareness for your business. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you on the next episode.